Jack and Ori, Jack and Ori, what's the story, Jack and Ori? The elves and the shoemaker. My brothers grin. There was once a shoemaker who worked very hard and was very honest, but still he could not earn enough to live upon. At last he had all in the world was gone, so he just never enough to make one pair of shoes. Then he cut his liver out, all ready to make his next up the next day. Mean and rise early in the morning to, to, to do to his work. His conscience was clear, his heart lit amidst all his troubles. So he went uh, uh, peacefully to bed, left all his cares to heaven, and soon fell asleep. In the morning after he had said his prayers, he sat himself down to his work. When, to his great wonder, there stood the shoes already made upon the table. The good man knew not what to say or think. Was such an odd thing happening. He looked at the workmanship. There was not one full stitch in the whole job. All was so neat and true that it was quite a masterpiece. The same day a customer came in. The shoes suited him well, so well. He finally paid a high price higher than usual for them. The poor shoemaker, with the money brought, leather enough to make two boys more. In the evening he cut them at the work and went to bed early. He might get up and begin bed, bed times next day, but he was saved all the trouble. But when he got up in the morning, the work was done already to his hand. So soon it came buyers who paid him handsomely for his goods. So he bought leather enough for four pair more. He cut the work again overnight, found it done in the morning. As before, he went on for some time. He was got ready in the evening. It was always done by the break break. The good man soon became thriving and went off again. One evening, about Christmas time, as he and his wife were sitting over the fire, chatting together, he said to her, I would like to sit up and watch tonight. What we may see, who it is that comes and does my work for me. A wife liked that fault. So they left a light burning and hid themselves in a corner of the room, behind a curtain that was hung up there, and watched what would happen. As soon as it was midnight, there came two little naked wolves. They sat themselves upon them a few makers' bench, took all the work up, all the work, and was cut out, again the pry with their own little things, stitching and wrapping, and tapping away at such rate that the shoemaker was in all wonder, could not take his eyes off them. So they went till the job was done, and the shoes stood ready for use upon the table. This was long before daybreak, and they bustled away as quick as lightning. The next wave, the wife said to the shoemaker, these little rites have made us rich. We ought to be thankful to them. And so, and do them a good turn if we can. I am quite sorry to see them run about as they do. Indeed, it's not very decent. For they might have nothing upon their backs to keep off the cold. I'll tell you what. I will make each of them a shirt, a coat, and a waistcoat. A pair of platoons in a, in for the bargain. And do you make each of them a little pair of shoes? The fault pleased the good cobbler. Very much on one evening, when all the things were ready, they laid them on the table instead of the work that they used to be cut out. They went and hid themselves to watch the wills might do. After midnight, they, they came, dancing and skipping, hopped around the room, and went down to sit down to the u- work as usual. But when they saw the clothes lying with for them, they laughed and chuckled, they seemed mightily delighted. Then they dressed themselves in twinkle of an eye, and danced a capered and sprang about as merry as they could be. Till at last they danced out of the floor, away of the green. A couple never saw them more. Everything went well for them. From that time forward, as long as they lived.